Thank you, Lord. Are you glad to be saved today? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad you're saved today. The world is a safer place. <laughs> There is more peace in the world because of you being saved. Open your Bibles to the book of 2 Samuel. <coughs> Second Samuel, the ninth chapter. Second Samuel, the ninth chapter. Well, how many of you are going to go home and watch the football game? Yeah. Think they're going to win? I think they're going to win. Second Samuel 9, starting in verse 1. <clears throat> now David said, Is there still anyone who's left of the house of Saul that I may show him the kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So when they had called him to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, At your service. Then the king said, Is there not still someone of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. So the king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Indeed, he is in the house of Maker, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. And King David sent and brought him out of the house of Makar, the son of Emil, from Lodabar. Now, when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, had come to David, he fell on his face and prostrated himself. <coughs> And David said to Mephibosheth, uh, I just lost my place. I can't believe it. Prostrated. Uh, okay. Then David said to Mephibosheth, or he said Mephibosheth, and he answered, Here is your servant. And David said to him, Do not fear. For I will surely show you the kindness of Jonathan for your father's sake. For the show you the kindness of J Jonathan for your father's sake. And I will restore you all the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. Then he bowed himself and said, What is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as I? And the king called Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given to your master's son all that belongs to Saul and to all his house. You therefore and your sons and your servants shall work the land for him, and you shall bring the harvest that your master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's son, shall eat bread at my table 
always. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Then Ziba said to the king, according to all that my lord the king has commanded, his servant, so we will do. And as for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table like one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all who dwelt in the house of Ziba were the servants of Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he ate continually at the king's table, and he was lame in both of his feet. Heavenly Father, I ask that you would help me today to communicate your word. Holy Spirit, that you would take this word and that you would plant it deep within our hearts. Cause it to bring forth fruit a hundredfold in every one of our lives. Let there be rhema. Cause there to be an understanding this day, God. Let your word find its place as you have designed it to do, Father, in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. <coughs> Amen. Does Elijah need a beating? Okay. He doesn't need another one? <coughs> all right. I want to designate someone to be beating Elijah today. <laughs> Who wants to beat my grass? <laughs> he knows I love him. I can't do it. <laughs> Mephibosheth I want to preach today a sermon when God's grace is made real through men this is a day that Mephibosheth wasn't going to forget for the rest of his life Word had quickly spread throughout the countryside that <coughs> Saul and Jonathan were dead and that David was a king. And at the uh, house of Jonathan, I'm sure that, that brought not only grief because of the loss of their family, but panic as well, because in that day it was customary for the king that took over the throne to eliminate the family of the king that used to have the throne. Mm -hmm. And that day that Jonathan and Saul died, Mephibosheth was probably playing on the floor like kids do and he was oblivious to everything that was going on, but the nurse came racing into the room and in panic she picked up the boy and began to run and take him to safety, but in doing so she dropped him and crushed his ankles and crippled the boy for the rest of his life. Now I'm positive that as Jonathan, or as uh, Mephibosheth was growing up, he believed that there would never be a day that could make up for what, was going to, what had just transpired in his life, the loss of his father, and him being crippled at the same time. It seemed, I'm sure, to him that he was destined <clears throat> to live the life of a pauper instead of a prince. Everything changed for him. He went from here to nowhere. Just like that. Lost his daddy. 
lost everything he had. And I'm sure that uh, his prospects for a future were pretty grim. This morning, there's been a lot of uh, communication about grace. And the devil hates grace. The devil hates grace. But grace, church, is the wonder of the gospel. <clears throat> that God should love a wretch like me. Poison. I'm just kidding, it's not, is it? It's a myth. So, Mary Ellen, you can trust it. <laughs> She's I ain't gonna eat it. 